Union address. President Obama takes center stage tonight for his annual State of the Union. Strong words. The Republican presidential hopefuls dig at each other with the Florida primary just around the corner. And healer's art. How a BYU nursing dean embodies the school's theme. I'm Angela Montieri. And I'm Anna Hayes. It's Tuesday, January 24th, and in Utah, it's 12 o'clock. From KBYU and the BYU Department of Communications. This is the award-winning 11 News at Noon. Justice Christine Durham is stepping down as Utah's Chief Justice. She is the first woman on the Utah Supreme Court and is the second longest serving in Utah's history. She says it was an honor to serve for 10 years, but it's time for new leadership. Justice Matthew B. Durant will replace her starting his four-year term on April 1st. The Speaker of the House is asking representatives to remember the importance of keeping the legislature about the people of Utah. Speaker Becky Lockhart says they can use their skills to find creative solutions to the problems and not use the floor to forward their personal agendas. Lockhart says she trusts the members to know the difference between helping the people and campaigning for themselves. Several representatives are running for higher office including U.S. Senate, House and the Governor's seat. State Senate will review a new bill that will cap the number of kids in some Utah classrooms. It would limit the number of students to 18 in kindergarten and up to 24 by the third grade. Proponents say the limit would get students more teacher time, but some question whether the salary money would be better spent on improving teacher quality. The man charged with shooting six Ogden police officers says he has no money to hire an attorney. Matthew David Stewart faces capital murder charges and several counts of attempted murder. And the Weber County attorney says they'll seek the death penalty. Only one officer injured in the shooting still remains and the hospital is now in, fair con in, in the hospital and is now in fair condition. Police arrested a Pleasant Grove man who claims he was tearing his home apart because he's possessed by demons. Police responded to Shane Price's apartment when neighbors complained of hearing large objects thrown around and banging on the floor. Police reports say Price says the demons are responsible. A search of the apartment found meth and the drug paraphernalia and Price now faces drug charges. And Mitt Romney released his 2010 tax returns this morning, showing some big numbers and big donations. Last year, he reported earnings earning more than $42 million, mostly from dividends and investments. He donated more than $4 million to the LDS Church and more than a half a million dollars to his alma mater, BYU. Romney has paid around $6 million in taxes over the last two years. One former IRS commissioner looked at those numbers and says Romney has paid his fair share. Romney and fellow Republican presidential candidate Newt Gingrich went head-to-head -head at a debate last night. Romney attacked Gingrich's record in Washington right off the bat, accusing him of being a Washington influence peddler, and the former Speaker of the House swung right back. In the 1990s, he had to resign in disgrace from this job as Speaker. I had the opportunity to go off and run the Olympic Winter Games. In the 15 years after he left the Speakership, uh, the Speaker has work, been working as an influence peddler in Washington. There's a point in this process where it gets unnecessarily personal and nasty, and that's sad. The fact is, I've had a very long career of trying to represent the people of Georgia, and as Speaker, the people of the United States. I think it's pretty clear to say that, that I have never ever go on and, and, and done any lobbying. The Gallup poll puts Romney and Gingrich in a tie for the lead going into the Florida primary. The Republican candidates have stolen most of the headlines this month, but tonight President Obama will get a chance to share his vision for the future. Greg Black shows us what the president is planning to speak on and what others are saying, already saying in response. President Obama takes the spotlight tonight when he delivers his annual State of the Union address. It's a chance to steal some thunder from the Republican White House hopefuls and to make an impact on Congress and the nation. He knows what he's about and he knows how he wants to uh, present this picture of the state of our union and, and his vision going forward. The focus of his address will be on the economy and job creation. The White House gave a hint of what to expect in a video released over the weekend. We can go in two directions. One is towards less opportunity and less fairness, or we can for where I think we need to go. Building an economy that works for everyone, not just a wealthy few. 
On Tuesday night, I'm going to talk about how we'll get there. Indiana Governor Mitch Daniels will deliver the Republican response to the president's address, and Herman Cain will give the Tea Party response. House Speaker John Boehner has already given his critique. And it sounds to me like the same old policies that we've seen. More spending, uh, higher taxes, more regulations. Uh, the same policies that haven't helped our economy, they've made it worse. And if that's what the president's going to talk about Tuesday night, I think it's pathetic. Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords will attend the address before she steps down. The Arizona Democrat is resigning this week to recover from a brain injury she suffered when she was shot last year. I'm Greg Black reporting. This will be the president's third State of the Union address and begins tonight at 7 o'clock. Today is Arizona Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords' last day in Congress. She says she is leaving to concentrate on recovering from the brain injury she got last January. Her shooter is in custody and doctors diagnosed him as schizophrenic. Giffords says every day she wakes up with high spirits and she is thankful for her supporters. Still to come on 11 News at noon. Healer's Art meet the head of BYU's nursing program who never lets life get her down. And baby boom. Is the year of the dragon going to be the year of baby bumps? We'll be right back. European finance ministers meet to work on the debt crisis. Divers are looking more closely at the Costa Concordia crash and the year of the dragon, the wedding and the baby. Here's a look at news from around the world. The European Union is heading back to the drawing board on the debt crisis. New discussions of debt relief for Greece start today. They want bondholders to forgo about half of what they're owned. The head of the International Monetary Fund is predicting a global depression if Europe fails to find a solution to the crisis. Scuba divers are still busy searching for missing people in the ship Costa Concordia. Italian officials say divers found two more bodies, bringing the number of confirmed dead to 15 people, with 17 still missing. Crews will begin salvaging while divers continue their search. The ship ran into rocks on January 13th off the coast of Italy. And people around the world are celebrating the start of the Year of the Dragon. Many are considering making it the Year of the Baby as well. The Dragon Year is the luckiest in the Chinese Zodiac. So many couples are visiting bridal shops like this one, planning weddings and babies around the calendar. The shop owner says business is up by a third over last year. And that's a look at your news from around the world. Angela, back to you. Thanks, Anna. Hundreds of students filled the Marriott Center to hear the author Marx Damas speak. He is the founder of the Civility Project and the Damas Group, which is a PR firm specializing only in Christian organizations and causes. He wrote the book, The Little Red Book of Wisdom, and shared this simple three-point pledge. I will be civil in my public discourse and behavior. I will be respectful of others, whether or not I agree with them. And thirdly, I will stand against incivility where and when I see it. DeMoss is currently the senior advisor to Mitt Romney's presidential campaign. Dr. Mary Williams loves nursing, teaching, and in a unique way, motherhood. Her experiences help her to bring Christ into all three as she practices the healer's art. 11 News reporter Kara Teos tells us about this journey of becoming a healer and a mother. Associate Dean of Nursing, Dr. Mary Williams, has made nursing her life, both in profession and family. It takes a lot to get Dr. Mary Williams down. I do love life. It's her love of life and caring for others that keeps her going. She has dedicated her life to taking care of everybody else, and she does it very, very well. Her life mirrors the theme of the college, learning the healer's art. And she says she seeks after the Savior as she continues to learn his way of healing. He would always say, do you want to be made whole? And I think it's, it's similar with your patients. Since she was a small girl, Dr. Williams wanted to be a nurse, and she got her love of teaching from her teacher father. I'm probably a little bit biased, but I think there are not two professions that are greater. She loves to care for others, but yet this way she's able to care for others and teach others how to do it. Family is everything to Dr. Williams. More than 20 years ago, she made a decision that forever changed her life. I had um, only one sister, and while I was getting my doctorate, I got a call from her. I was 11 when my mom died, so Mary was willing to give up her life and come and take care of all of us. 
Her nieces and nephew are her children, and their children, her grandchildren. She's a very cool grandma. Dr. Williams says being a mother helps her better understand the healer's art. At the College of Nursing's big 60th anniversary celebration this year, the women's chorus will sing, Lord, I Would Follow Thee, in which the phrase, I would learn the healer's art appears. The writer Susan Evans McLeod has added two verses that focus on nursing. Back to you. Thanks, Kara. 11 News at Noon returns. Home court advantage. There's something about the Smith Fieldhouse that keeps the Cougars winning. And polar plunge. It's not exactly bikini season, but that didn't stop these guys. Find out why. That is much too cold for me. But while it's not swimming season, does that mean we have to say bye to the sun? I'll have your 11 News weather when we... You may think that because of all the snowfall we had last night that the avalanche risk would go up, but it's actually gone down. The Utah Avalanche Center is lowering its risk warning this week from extreme down to high. The center warns winter sports lovers to avoid the backcountry as the slopes still remain unstable, even with this lower risk level. We got a lot of snow last night. It feels yes, like winter is finally here, but are we going to get any sun this week at all? Yes, we yeah. will. I don't want to get those winter blues. <laughs> no. That's when the sun's going to come out. Definitely. <laughs> the sun will come out later on this week. Taking a look outside, we can actually see some blue skies up here, up here above the mountains. There is snow on the ground, and as you can see, there's a whisper of clouds up there, which is good. It'll be keeping our temperatures temperatures up higher than what it would be currently outside. It is 32 degrees. Um, our humidity is quite high at 86 percent. We do have a northwest wind that will be blowing through, keeping our wind speeds a bit low at six miles per hour. So while it will be wet out there, it won't be too windy. So that's good. Later on today, what can we expect? We can expect a temperature drop. We'll have 26 degrees later tonight. Uh, the weather will be mostly cloudy. We won't expect too much snow. In fact, we can expect less than a half an inch of accumulated snow throughout the day. And our sunset tonight at 535. Now taking a bigger picture of what's going on across the state, let's take a look at our sat map. Down here in the southwest, it's warm weather, which is pushing this cold storm up north. Now, as it pulls more east, closer to Utah, it'll be too far north to really affect us, so we won't be too worried about that. Taking a closer look at Utah, at our Utah highs, up north, it'll still be colder temperatures due to that snow um, storm we just looked at. We have 36 in Logan, 39 in Salt Lake. As we work, Lower south, we have 40s here, 42 in Provo. And down in southern Utah, we have Cedar City. It's kind of out of the norm with 38, but St. George always in the norm with the high temperature of 51. Now, southern day forecast, they are quite boring. Sunny, sunny, sunny. Starting out the week with high 58. Thursday, they'll actually hit 60 right here. Friday and Saturday with a high of 56 and a low of 32. Now up in northern Utah, there's a different story. Uh, we have weather all over the place. Today it'll be mostly cloudy, um, not too much snowfall or rain. Wednesday cloudy. Thursday it'll start out rainy. Um, when, it gets, when it comes to the night, we'll have a 60% chance of snow. Friday and Saturday is that much promised sun with 44 and 45 degrees for our highs. This is good. My mom's coming from California on Friday, oh. so she'll get a little bit of sun. Yeah, yes. she'll still she get the winter weather, but still get that vitamin C. That's so right. glad. <laughs> yeah, it's good that we have the snow. It's beautiful outside, so. Definitely. Thanks so much, Kiko. You're welcome. <laughs> Bridget, I have heard all about our men's volleyball team, and apparently they are just absolutely on fire this season. Maybe that's why it hasn't snowed. They've just been heating Provo <laughs> up or something. I don't know. That's it. That's the reason. What's going on in sports, Bridget? Well, next on sports, two BYU teams are climbing the rankings. But it's already sitting pretty at the tippy top, and the players aren't the only ones getting rallying to get wins. Sports is next. Stay tuned.
Walking in the snow is cold enough, but in Massachusetts, they're taking it even further. The daredevil plungers sprint into the frigid 35 degree water for this polar plunge fundraiser celebrating John Hancock's birthday. They run into the water as quickly as possible just to get enough wet on their body and then jump right back out and hightail it to the shore. Organizers say it may be the shortest fundraiser in history. Yeah, and thank goodness for that. Looks freezing. Yeah. <laughs> Are you kidding me? It is too, so cold. Cold. too cold. Too cold for that. Too cold for a Polynesian, too cold for <laughs> That's <right>. anyone. <laughs> That's 11 News at noon for Tuesday, January 24th. You could join us anytime on our website, 11news.byu.edu. Thanks for watching and have a great afternoon.